ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد dear muslims in surah yusuf which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has called the best of all surahs there is one particular incident and ayah that we will inshallah ta'ala use as the beginning of our khutbah today when the brethren of yusuf go to yaqub and they say to him give up hope stop daydreaming that yusuf is going to come back stop thinking that one day you're going to get your son back give this up and they criticize yaqub and they said la taftau tadhkuru yusuf qala taftau tadhkuru yusuf hatta takuna haradan aw takuna min alhalikin are you going to constantly talk about yusuf 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 until you're going to go crazy or until you die give up stop daydreaming that yusuf is going to come back and yaqub alayhi salam spoke to them from a wisdom and a trust and an optimism and a dignity that can only come from iman in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says ya bani yadhabu fatahassasu min yusuf wa akhi go o oh my children go and discover any news you can go and try to find yusuf despite all odds it's been 30 years i've never heard one whisper of his existence it's been 30 years i've gone blind from crying from yusuf but i'm not going to give up hope in yusuf coming back to me idhabu go my children fatahassasu min yusuf bring me any news of yusuf go and see if you can find him hear him smell him wa akhihi wa la tay'asu min ruhillah and do not give up hope in the blessings and mercy of Allah. Do not give up hope in Allah changing the situation. Then, even though he's gone blind from crying out of fear and anguish, even though 30 years have gone by, even though his own children have betrayed him, still he teaches them a principle of Islam and Iman. إِنَّهُ لَا يَيْأَسُ مِنْ رَوْحِ اللَّهِ إِلَّا الْقَوْمُ الْكَافِرُونَ Nobody gives up hope in Allah's mercy except the kafir. Nobody becomes pessimistic except the kafir. The mu'min can never be pessimistic. The mu'min will always have hope in Allah despite all odds, despite everything turning against him. The world might seem bleak and black. There doesn't seem any news, any light at the end of the tunnel. It doesn't matter. The mu'min never loses hope in Allah's mercy. Only the kafir can possibly lose hope in Allah's mercy. From this incident, we will begin our khutbah and some points we can extract from this beautiful anecdote first and foremost it demonstrates that having positive thoughts having optimistic thoughts against all the odds it doesn't matter what the world says it doesn't matter what the children of yaqub say it doesn't matter the whole earth has not given you a glimmer of hope we don't care we believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and only the kafir gives up all hope. As for the mu'min who believes in Allah, there will always be optimism. And so we learn optimism is not just something that is good to have. Optimism is linked to iman. When you have iman, you will be optimistic in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you have iman, you will always look at things in a bright manner. Best in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A second point we derive is that looking forward to good news and being optimistic does not change the sadness of a situation. Yaqub is sad. Yaqub is grieving. Yaqub is crying. Yaqub has gone blind from crying from 30 years. That does not affect his iman. That has nothing to do with iman. It is not a sign of weakness to feel sad. 
It is not a sign of weakness to feel anxious. It is not a sign of weak iman to keep on crying, crying, crying. That has nothing to do with having good thoughts in Allah, having trust in Allah, having husna dhan in Allah. Sadness is one thing and good thoughts is another. Yaqub is sad, but he still has good thoughts of Allah. Yes, the situation is bleak. Yes, it looks overwhelming. Yes, we feel anxiety, but still our hearts turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A third point of benefit is that this optimism we're talking about, this having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is a act of worship that emanates from the heart, but it does not affect and impact the plan and the action. It is a spiritual construct. It exists in the qalb. It is not shown in the actions. How so? Yaqub is sitting at home expecting a miracle. He wants Yusuf to come back and he is expecting a miracle. But that miracle will only happen when you put in the effort. And what is the effort? Oh, every son of mine, go spread forth in the earth. Each one of you go in a different direction. Each one of you go and search for Yusuf. Ask the people, where is Yusuf? min Yusuf. The miracle does not happen when you sit at home and do nothing. The miracle does not happen by mere ibadah and dua. No, ibadah and dua is the first half. You do it. After that, you have a plan. You have an action. You have an agenda. You do. Oh, children, go and search for Yusuf. The searching for Yusuf has nothing to do with the tawakkul of the heart. So when you put your trust in Allah, when you have good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that doesn't mean you just sit back and expect the miracle. The miracle might indeed happen, but it's only going to happen when you have the plan. How do we find about Yusuf? How do we get from point A to point B? This is how we do that. We plan, we plot, we have an agenda, we have an action item, we have a series of to-do lists, but our heart is attached up there. So Yaqub tells his sons, go and search, get me any news of Yusuf. That is the action, that is the planning, and that has nothing to do with the state of the heart. And so we learn from this as well, that the action of the qalb, the tawakkul, and the hope in Allah has nothing to do with the actions in this world. We're still going to plan, we're still going to think, how do I get from point A to point B? What is the mechanism to do so? And we will try to do our best, even when we think there's no hope, we still put in the effort. Even when we don't see any solution, can you imagine? Imagine, put yourself in Yaqub's shoes. 30 years have gone by. They haven't even heard a rumor of his existence. Not even a whiff of where he is. Still, he puts in the plan. Still, he says, go and search for Yusuf. This is what the mu'min does. You never give up. You always try. And you know, maybe that trying is not the correct thing to do. But as long as it is within the Sharia's allowance, you have to do what you do. And Allah will bring the miracles from his side. You have no option. What else is Yaqub going to do? There is no internet and cell phone. There is no tracking device. All he can do, oh my sons, go spread in the land. See if any of you can find any news of Yusuf alayhi salam. You have to do what you have to do. And you leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We also learn from this anecdote, from this incident. We also learn from this story in the Quran. That the people of Iman and Taqwa, they inspire others with optimism. And the people who don't have Iman and don't have knowledge, they are the pessimistic naysayers. It was the children of Yaqub. It was the brothers of Yusuf who did the zulm to Yusuf. And yes, Allah forgave them. So know that Allah forgave them. But still, their level of Iman is not like Yusuf and his father. Their level of knowledge is not like Yusuf and his father. Even if Allah forgave them, at this stage especially, they have committed a sin. And what do they say to Yaqub? What do they say? Stop having hope. Stop being optimistic. Are you going to keep on thinking of Yusuf till you go crazy? We learn here, Yaqub is giving optimism. His sons who did the crime are giving pessimism. And wallahi, we see this in the ummah around us now. Wallahi, we see al-hadd al-fasil, the clear distinction between people of Iman and the opposite of that. You have people of Iman and Taqwa, they're encouraging, they're pushing forward. And you have the opposite, the naysayers, the critic mongers, all they can do is cause fitna and whine and moan and complain and have no benefit whatsoever. 
This is exactly like the story of Yaqub here. The people of Iman, they exude optimism, po positive energy. They make people move and shake. They, they bring people together. They have an agenda and plan. And the people on the opposite spectrum, all they can do is make fun of and criticize. Exactly like the brethren of Yaqub. Making fun of Yaqub. Making fun of their father and saying, are you going to go crazy? Are you going to go mad just doing always moaning and grumbling about, ya about Yusuf alayhi salam? So what do we gain by simply criticizing and not doing anything? This is not the methodology of the real people of knowledge. It is not the methodology of the followers of the prophets. It is not the methodology of the people of Iman and Taqwa. And notice, oh brothers and sisters, bring, bring, having good thoughts of Allah, bringing optimism to the table, this is a core value of all the prophets of Islam. It is a core value of Iman. Look at any story that involves any type of incident in which the prophets want some good. The prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, the prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam, he did not have a child until he was 110 years old. He's waiting for a child. More than 100 years he's waiting. He has gone old. His wife has become sterile, barren. She cannot give birth. And he's still making dua for children. So much so that when he's making dua, he himself says, as the Quran says, وَمَنْ يَقْنَطُ مِنْ رَحْمَةِ رَبِّهِ إِلَّا الضَّالُّونَ Who can ever give up hope of Allah's rahma except somebody who's misguided? Who can give up hope of Allah's Rahmah? I'm still hopeful of Allah's Rahmah. Even though I'm 100 and my wife is 90, even though technically there can be no children, I'm still going to have my hope in Allah. Who can give up hope of Allah's Rahmah except the misguided, except those who are lost? And this is a constant theme. Zakariya, and the same story applies in the Quran as well. Zakariya himself is making dua to Allah for children. Even though his hair has gone white, his bones have gone, grown feeble. The Quran tells us the story of Ibrahim as a child as well. Ibrahim as a child, when he's against Nimrud, he's against the entire world. And at that stage, there was no Muslim on earth other than this teenager Ibrahim. At that stage, all of mankind was lost. There was not a single person of, of, of Islam in the entire whole earth except for Ibrahim. There are no armies that can come and help. There is no help. He is a 13-year-old boy and he has the emperor Nimrud. He has the greatest army and Nimrud Nimrud is making fun of him. Nimrud and his own father are on one side. And we all know the story. When he's thrown into the fire, he says, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Allah will take care of me. And Allah is all I need to take care of me. Hasbun Allah. That's all I need. Wa ni'mal wakil. And if Allah helps me, that's all I need help of. And that, therefore, Allah says, Qulna ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. O oh, fire, be a coolness and a comfort for Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied to the plea of Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the incident of Ahzab as well, the same incident, the same uh, dhikr was done, the same formula was said when the people of Medina were surrounded by the entire armies of Arabia and the Sahaba themselves began to palpitate. The Quran says, This is in the Quran. Your hearts were in your chest. Your hearts were palpitating. There was so much anxiety. But the Mu'minun said, هَذَا مَا وَعَدَنَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَصَدَقَ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ Allah promised us this is going to happen. There's going to be tense times. Allah promised us. We know this is going to happen. We put our trust in Allah. By the way, notice once again, having fear does not go against Iman. You're going to have fear surrounded by the army. Being anxious, being worried, being scared, that does not negate Iman. You conquer that and you turn to Allah subhanahu Wa ta and the Sahaba said, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. Hasbun Allahu wa ni'mal wakil. So, this notion of being optimistic, this notion of having the best thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it actually involves a number of concepts. And we have given, and I have given, and other people have given multiple khutbas about all of these concepts. I'm going to quickly summarize for our own benefit so that we understand. At least there are three or four different concepts that come together. First and foremost, it is the concept of tafa'ul, of optimism. This is a part of Iman. Being optimistic is a part of Iman as our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. Secondly, it is the concept of Raja. And Raja means you are hoping Allah will give you good. This is Raja. Watarjoon, Allah mentions you're hoping for something. So having a good hope in Allah is Raja. 
Number three, husna dhan in Allah, having good thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Husna dhan min al-iman, having good thoughts is from iman. And number four, and the one concept that combines all of them is the reality of tawakkul, of putting one's trust and utmost complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once again, number one is tafa'ul, optimism. Number two, raja, and all of these are Quranic and hadith. Raja means you want Allah to give you something that is good. You expect Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you something. Number three is husna dhan in Allah, good thoughts of Allah. And number four is tawakkul, which sum summarizes and combines all of them, putting one's trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And where does tawakkul come from? And by the way, each one of these four, if you think about it, they are linked to one another. When you have tawakkul, you will have good thoughts of Allah. When you have good thoughts of Allah, you will expect raja. When you have raja, then you're going to be optimistic. Each one leads to the other and each one feeds into the other. So if you understand these concepts, you will inshallah ta'ala overall impact your life in a positive manner. Where does all of these ideas and concepts come from? Where do they become stronger? How do you strengthen your tawakkul, your raja, your husna dhan? All, all of this is linked to one simple reality. If you know who is Allah, you will feel optimistic in Allah. It's simple as that. If you know who is Allah, if you have strong iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, automatically the whole world will change. Your, your vision of this world will change. When you understand Allah is Malik and Allah is Rabb, and that's why when Allah talks about tawakkul, He brings in iman in Him. For example, Allah says in the Quran, وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَتَوَكَّلُوا إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ If you have iman, don't worry, put your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says in the Quran, وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى الْحَيِّ الَّذِي لَا يَمُوتِ Put your tawakkul in al-hay, the one who never dies. Meaning, how can you not put your tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when He is the one who is al-hay and everything around is going to die. Everything around will perish. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا لَنَا أَلَّا نَتَوَكَّلَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَقَدْ هَدَانَا سُبُلَنَا How can we not put our tawakkul in Allah when Allah has given us all that we need and guided us to Islam? How can we not put our tawakkul in Allah when Allah has given us all of this? So Allah links tawakkul in belief in Him. And when you have that level of tawakkul, of raja, of husna dhan, when you have that level of optimism. It doesn't matter how bleak the world is. It doesn't matter how bleak the whole dunya appears. Your heart is going to boom optimism. Your heart is going to inspire the people around you. Notice when uh, Musa alayhi salam, when Musa is told to flee from Fir'aun, when Musa takes his followers, and who, who were his followers? They weren't an army. They were peasants. They were average people, civilians. And they're running and fleeing from Fir'aun. And Fir'aun is galloping on his horses. Fir'aun has all of the world's superpower, all of the weapons, all of the media, all of the arsenal and agenda is with Fir'aun. And Musa and the civilians are fleeing for their lives. And they come and they see in front of them the Red Sea. And the people of Musa say, on the one hand is the Red Sea, on the other hand is Fir'aun and his army. The people of Musa, the Bani Israel, they say, Inna la mudrakun. We are gone. We're lost. There's nothing. Again, lack of Iman. Again, low knowledge. Again, they don't have that level of Musa. So when they see the Red Sea on the one side and Fir'aun on the other, they say everything is lost. He's going to catch us and he's going to execute us. Inna la mudrakun. Musa, at this stage, does not know how Allah will save him, but he knows Allah will save him. He knows he has tawakkul in Allah. With the Red Sea in front of him and Fir'aun and his army behind him, Musa cries out, Kalla, that's not going to happen. Kalla, they're not going to get rid of us. Inna ma'iya rabbi sayahdeen. I have my Rabb with me. He shall find a way out for me. This is what you call optimism. This is what you call tawakkul. It doesn't matter. You have the superpower behind you and you have the ocean in front of you. If you have Allah, Oh, that's all that you need. And Musa said, Inna ma'iya rabbi. My Rabb is with me. He's not going to abandon me. He's not going to leave me like this. And so when Musa demonstrated that iman, Allah blessed him with the miracle. The miracle might come indeed, but it's only going to come when you're fleeing and when you're doing what you need to do. And Allah says to Musa, Idrib bi'asak. 
flinger staff in the Red Sea. Even the Red Sea is going to open up and you will find a way out. And the same goes with our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he was fleeing from the Quraysh in the Hijrah and he has no army there are no armed guards with him the Quraysh have given a massive bounty of 100 camels dead or alive the entire place of Mecca is streaming with people to try to find him and we all know the story that Abu Bakr and our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam they find a cave that small cave that cave of Thor and they sit there for two three days until finally one of the search parties goes and sees them and Abu Bakr himself not out of care for his life out of love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Abu Bakr begins to tremble and he says Ya Rasulullah if they look down they will see us and once again this is what the Noor of Iman does this is what your thiqa and your trust in Allah does. In the darkness of the cave, the light of Iman shines out. Ya Abu Bakr, ma dhannuka bithnayn, Allahu thalithuhuma. Oh Abu Bakr, what do you think of two people? What will happen to them when Allah is the third of them? Ya Abu Bakr, la tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. Ya Abu Bakr, la tahzan, inna Allah ma'ana. Don't worry, the Prophet is consoling Abu Bakr, even though Abu Bakr is worried for the Prophet's life but he is consoling Ya Abu Bakr don't worry Allah is with us Allah is with us this is the attitude of the believer in spite of all that is happening in spite of all the negativities in spite of all the superpowers coming we put our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when we put our trust in Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us what we want in this dunya and for sure in the akhirah so many incidents and stories from the seerah and after the seerah one very powerful anecdote and of course without a doubt the prophets have the highest level and so yes we're going to be truthful here and say the miracles of the prophets are a different level don't expect the Red Sea to be parted for us fair enough but even the righteous shall be given miracles this is the reality karamat we call them even the righteous they will be given Allah's Allah's a response and dua will come and a beautiful story from our uh, post sira the, uh, after the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so many incidents in the life of the Sahaba one of them very beautiful incident the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Hawariyu Rasulullah Zubair Ibn Al-Awwam the companion and the cousin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam one of the first to embrace Islam one of the Ashara Mubashara Zubair on his deathbed he called his son Abdullah and he said, Oh Abdullah, I am not worried about anything in the eyes of Allah. I have good thoughts of Allah, but there's one thing that I'm worried about. And his son said, What, oh my father? Zubair said, I am leaving debts that I have to pay off to people. I'm leaving debts that I have to pay off to people. So make sure you pay off my debts as fast as you can. Make sure that you get rid of my debts. And he told his son Abdullah, Sell this land, sell this land, do this, and pay off my debts. Then he said, and remember Zubair and his son Abdullah, they were both physically fit. They were powerful people. They were from the elite of the Quraysh. Zubair says to his son, and if you don't have enough money to pay off my debts, then seek help from my master. Abdullah says, I was shocked. My father is saying, seek help from my master, my mawla. Seek. So I said, oh Abati, who is your mawla? It's the first time I'm hearing you have a mawla. You are from the Quraysh. Who is your mawla? He said, Allah is my mawla. Allah is my mawla. And Allah will take care of my debts. And so Abdullah said, when he passed away, I sold the land and it was not enough for the debts. So I turned to Allah, I raised my hands and I said, O oh, mawla of Zubair, O oh, mawla of Zubair, my father said, you would take care of his debts. So I'm pleading to you, making dua to you on behalf of my father, that you take care of his debts. And Abdullah says, Wallahi, not a day went by, except that risk came from here and there, without even me knowing from where, and I paid off the debts of my father. This is the reality of tawakkul, of husn al of optimism. When you have good thoughts of Allah, when you put your trust in Allah, when you always think Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of me, then Allah Azza wa Jal will show you in this world that which will bring comfort and in the akhirah will of course be Allah's everlasting reward. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless me and you with and through the Quran and may He make us of those who its verses they understand and applies halal and haram throughout our lifespan. Ask Allah's forgiveness, you as well ask Him for he is the Ghafoor and the Rahman.
Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah, the one and the unique. He it is whom we worship, and it is his aid that we seek. He is the Lord of the oppressed, and he hears the prayer of the weak. As to what follows, related to this concept of having good thoughts, related to this concept of being optimistic, there is something in our sharia that we should all be aware of. And that is, some people have translated it in English as a good omen. A good omen. Al-fa'l al-hasan. And this is something that is allowed in our sharia. Ah. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, there is no such thing as bad luck. There is no such thing as bad omen. But I love good omens. They said, what is a good omen? He said, a good vision that you see or a good phrase that you hear. He gave an example. This hadith is in Bukhari. What does this mean, a good omen? And what are we to make of this reality? So firstly, realize, O Muslims, we do not believe in anything superstitious. We are people of Iman. We are people of Tawheed. We are people who believe in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. If something happens, we don't read in a negative. A black cat crosses our path or umbrellas opening in the house or anything from every culture has its, its, its you know, superstitions. We don't believe in any of this. There is no such thing as negative superstition. Nothing. We don't believe in it. But we believe in the opposite. What is the opposite? The opposite is a good omen. A good omen is anything that happens around you of the natural world or of amongst your family and friends, anything that happens that you read is a sign from Allah that Allah wants to give me good news. Allah wants to cheer me up. Allah is giving me hope when I thought there is no hope. This is a part of Iman. This is all legit and good. And anything that brings hope can be used for this. Why? Because having good thoughts of Allah is a part of Iman. And so when you read in good thoughts to an omen around you, you are simply exemplifying Iman. You are showing you have Iman. So you may and you should read in positive omens. And there are many examples for this, from the trivial to the bigger than that. So suppose you're making dua right now, it's a cloudy day. Suppose we're making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for something good. Then we open our eyes and lo and behold, we see the sun, we see the brightness coming down. We say, oh, this is a sign that Allah azza wa jal will change my situation from gloom to light. This is Iman. This is Tawheed. This is the essence of Iman. Why? Because you're having good thoughts of Allah. So what's the problem in that? Having good thoughts based upon something that even the name of a human being, our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, even used to read in good news and good omens from the names of people when somebody would come. So for example, in the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, three, four, five emissaries came and none of them, they were able to finish the treaty. Then Suhail ibn Amr came. And Suhail comes from the Arabic sahula, which means to make easy. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Suhail has come, Allah will make things sahal for us. He read in a good omen. Suhail has come. This is a good news now. Allah will make things easy for us. And indeed, when Suhail came, that was when they were able to break the ice and have the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Therefore, brothers and sisters, read in good omens to whatever you want, but don't ever read in negative. There's no negative sign. There's no evil omen. There's no such thing as bad luck or bad superstition. But we do believe in everything that is positive. To conclude this whole khutbah, oh brothers and sisters, memorize that beautiful hadith Qudsi, which is in Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. I am as my servant thinks I am with him. So whoever has good thoughts of me, I shall fulfill those good thoughts with regards to my relationship with him. And whoever thinks evil of me, well then, that will be how he will be finding his qadr. So have good thoughts of Allah. Have husn al in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of how bleak the situation is, regardless of if you think all doors are shut in your heart, always be optimistic and realize even if your particular happiness is not shown in this dunya. This is an important point here because maybe what you want is not going to be given to you. Your optimism will be rewarded. Your optimism will bring happiness in this dunya and especially in the akhirah. This is an important disclaimer and caveat. Maybe some of you are battling an issue of finances, an issue of health. Maybe our brothers and sisters in Gaza, they're battling for a long time. We don't know when the victory will come. It doesn't mean they shouldn't have 
have good hope. They must have good hope. We must have good hope. And even if we do not see victory in our lifetimes, our good hope is giving us another victory, a victory of optimism in this dunya, a victory of the life made, being made easier to live, and most importantly, the victory of attaining Allah's pleasure. In other words, Optimism will always be fruitful, even if what you are optimistic for, if that particular thing doesn't happen, that is not a failure in optimism. No, you will be successful when you are optimistic in Allah and put your tawakkul in Allah, and there are no exceptions to that. Allahumma inni da'in fa'aminu. Allahumma la tad'a fi hiryawmi dhamban illa ghafarta, wa la hamman illa farrajta, wa la daynan illa qadayta, wa la maridan illa shafayta, wa la asiran illa yassarta. اللهم اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم من أرادنا أو أراد الإسلام والمسلمين بالسوء فاجغله بنفسه واجعل تدميره في تدبيره يا قوي يا عزيز عباد الله إن الله تعالى أمركم بأمر بدأ به بنفسه وثنى بملائكة قدسه وثلث بكم أيها المؤمنون من جنه وإنسه فقال عزم قائل عليما إن الله ملاكه يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على عبدك رسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين عباد الله إن الله تعالى يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العظيم يذكركم واشكروه يزد لكم ولذكر الله تعالى أكبر وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة وقد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله استو اعتدلوا الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا إن مع العسر يسرا فإذا فرغت فانصب وإلى ربك فانغب الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين إذا جاء نصر الله والفتح ورأيت الناس يدخلون في دين الله أفواجا فسبح بحمد ربك واستغفره إنه كان توابا الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم I have some two very important announcements I'm going to have two minutes of yours firstly tomorrow inshallah Sunday uh, Texas is having the largest demonstration ever in support of our brothers and sisters in Gaza in Austin in front of the state capitol so please try to make your way there there are going to be buses coming as well um, I know Ikna and others are involved in this so please make sure that you yourselves try to go down um, and it's going to be taking place in front of the state capitol inshallah uh, secondly on Tuesday we here at Epic are going to be making an Epic announcement I'm not allowed to tell you what it is or else it wouldn't be announcement but I can tell you that this announcement is a game changer for the entire da'wah scene in North America, for American Muslim community. That's all I'm allowed to tell you, but Tuesday after Isha, please be here. We're going to make a groundbreaking announcement for, I can't say more than this, for something, but please make sure you're here for Tuesday. It's a very, very amazing idea and concept that inshallah ta'ala will positively affect not just us but really our future generations and the muslims of this country and all of us inshallah can be a part of it so tuesday after salat al-isha over here at epic jazakumullah khair assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh